September 7th, 10 a.m. District Court, courtroom. November, number one. <laughs> I was like, November, I was like, what? <laughs> uh... Court is now in session for the trial of Miss Maya Faye. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Miles Edgeworth. I better not show any signs of weakness today or he'll be on me in an instant. Mr. Edgeworth, please give the court your opening statement. Thank you, Your Honor. The defendant, Miss Maya Fay, was at the scene of the crime. The prosecution has evidence she committed this murder, and we have a witness who saw her do it. The prosecution sees no reason to doubt the facts of this case, Your Honor. I see. Thank you, Mr. Edgeworth. Let's begin, then. We may call our first witness, Your Honor. The prosecution calls this chief officer at the scene, Detective Gumshoe. Witness, please state your name and profession to the court. Sir, my name's Dick Gumshoe, sir. I'm the detective in charge of the homicides down at the precinct, sir. Detective Gumshoe, please describe for us the details of this murder. Very well, sir. Let me use this floor map of the office to explain. The body was found by this window here. And the cause of death? Loss of blood to being struck by a blunt object, sir. The murder weapon was a statue of the thinker found next to the body, sir. It was heavy enough to be a deadly weapon even in a girl's hand, sir. The court accepts the statue as evidence. They're still calling it a statue? Floor plans added to the court record. Floor plans. The murder scene. The Fay and Co. Law Offices. Now, Detective. Yes, sir. You immediately arrested Miss Maya Fay, who was found at the scene, correct? Can you tell me why? Yes, sir. I had hard evidence she did it, sir. Hmm, Detective Gumshoe, please testify to the court about this hard evidence. Witness testimony, Maya Faye's arrest. As soon as the phone call came in, I rushed to the scene. There were two people there already. The defendant, Miss Maya Faye, and the lawyer, Mr. Phoenix Wright. I immediately arrested Miss Maya Faye. Why? We had a witness account describing her. The witness saw Miss Maya Fay at the very moment of the murder. Hmm. The very moment, you say. Very well, Mr. Wright. You may begin your cross-examination. Yes, Your Honor. Cross-examine what? I couldn't see a single contradiction in that testimony. Whoosh. Smack. Hey, Maya just threw something at me. What's this? When my sister couldn't find any contradictions in a witness testimony, she would bluff it and press the witness on every detail. The witness always slips up and says something wrong. It worked lots of times. Yeah. I should have expected Maya would know some of her sister's tricks. Alright, let's give this a try. Something the matter? No, Your Honor. I'd like to begin my cross-examination. Cross-examination. By a phaserist. As soon as the phone call came and I rushed to the scene, there were two people there already. The defendant, Miss Maya Fay, and the lawyer, Mr. Phoenix Wright. I immediately arrested Miss Maya Fay. Why? We had a witness account describing her. The witness saw Miss Maya Fay at the very moment. I can't see a single contradiction in there. I have to take Maya's advice and press him on anything, any, on anything suspicious. Yeah, as soon as I keep the phone call came and I rushed to see there were two people there already. Why we had a witness I can't describe here. Hold it! Hold on just one second. Yeah? 
If I heard correctly, you said you arrested her because you had hard evidence she did it, correct? Huh? Did, did I say that? Me? I heard you say it. You did say it. You said it. Exactly. What about the suspicious woman in pink claim was hard evidence? What? Miss May isn't suspicious, and she sure isn't pink, pal. Well, I guess she is pink. That's enough, Detective Gumshoe. Do you have any more solid proof other than her claims, Detective? Mm, mm, I guess pressing can have its advantages. Yes. Sorry, I got the order of things mixed up in my testimony, Your Honor, sir. There was something I should have told you about first, Your Honor. Very well, Detective. Let's hear your testimony again. Witness testimony. Hard evidence. After securing the suspect, I examined the scene of the crime with my own eyes. I found a memo written on a piece of paper next to the victim's body. On it, the word Maya was written clearly in blood. Lab test results showed that the blood was the victim. Also, there was blood found on the victim's finger. Before she died, the victim wrote the killer to the How you like that? That's my hard evidence. Hmm. Before we begin a cross-examination, I have a question for you, Detective. Your Honor? Why didn't you testify about the vital piece of evidence the first time? Uh, I know, I'm real embarrassed I forgot about that, Your Honor, sir. Try to be more careful. Very well. The defense may begin its cross-examination. Cross-examination, hard evidence. After securing the suspect, I examined the scene of the crime with my own eyes. I found a memo written on a piece of paper. Okay, well, I already read this. Uh, the word Maya was written clearly in blood. Lab test results showed that the blood was the victim. Also, there was blood found before she died. The victim. That's a whole testimony? Okay, there has to be a contradiction in there. I think it'd be I remember. Detective Gumshoe, do you get a lot of cases where the victim actually writes the killer's name? Sure, it happens all the time in books and movies. This isn't a movie, Detective. Oof. Let's talk about reality, shall we? Mm, I guess I haven't heard of many cases, no. You find it a little odd that the victim would write down a name, especially the name of her own sister? Uh, yeah, actually, you got a point, pal. Objection! Stop right there. The witness opinion on the matter is irrelevant. The facts are clear. The victim wrote down the name of the accused. The victim told us the name of her killer. Order. Order. That didn't go so well. That's right. What he said. That's his whole testimony? Okay. There has to be a contradiction in there somewhere. That's why I did. Detective Gumshoe, there's one thing I want you to clarify f for me here. You say that the victim, Maya, Mia Fey, wrote this note. That she was accusing the defendant, Maya Fey? That's really what you're saying. What? This isn't one of those lawyer tricks now, is it? Of course she wrote it. Who else could have? You have it backwards, Detective. 
Backwards. The victim is, oh, is the only person who absolutely could not have written it. This is a report from your department, detective. Immediate death due to a blow from a blunt object. She died immediately. But... No, butting your way out of this one, detective. No. Order, order! The defense has a point. Someone who died immediately wouldn't have had the time to write anything down. Mr. Wright, I beg your pardon, but what exactly did you obtain that autopsy report? What? When? The day after the murder. The day after the murder. It was the day after the murder. The prosecution's point being... You, that auto autopsy report is outdated, Your Honor. What? A second autopsy was performed yesterday at my request. Death was almost immediate due to a blow from a blunt object. But there is a possibility the victim lived for several minutes after the blow. I received those results this morning. No way. Your Honor, it's quite easy to imagine that the victim did have time to write my... Uh, that is all. I see. Damn you, Edgeworth. I shouldn't- I should have known you'd have something up your sleeve. Why, Mr. Wright? You look shocked. Something you want to say? Detective Gumshoe, you're a sham. How could you give me a faulty report? Uh, I thought... Detective Gumshoe... Uh, I'm disappointed in you handing him the wrong report like that. It, I... I'm sorry, sir. You are at fault, Detective. This isn't going to look good on your evaluation next time. What? What? Your Honor, I submit this report to the court. Understood. The court accepts the evidence. Autopsy report updated in the court record. Mia's autopsy report died from a blow by a blunt object may have lived for a few minutes after being hit. Well, Your Honor, the evidence strongly suggests the victim was identifying the killer. I suppose that's the obvious conclusion, yes. Darn, this isn't good. Prosecution would like to call its next witness. This poor innocent girl saw the murder with her own very own eyes. Oh god. Let the witness, Miss April May, take the stand. Exactly what part of her is innocent. Witness, your name, please. April May, at your service. Order! An introduction should not require any reaction from the crowd. The witness will refrain from wanton winking. Ah, Yes, your honor! This is not good. She's already captured the heart of every man in this courtroom. Tell us, where were you on the night of September 5th when the murder occurred? Mmm, gee. I was like, in my hotel room. Tee <laughs> hee! I checked in right after lunch. And this hotel is directly across from the Fane Co. Law offices? Mmm. That's right, big boy. Please testify to the court about what you saw. Witness testimony, witness account. It was like nine at night. I looked out the window, you know, and then, oh! I saw a woman with long hair being attacked. The one attacking her was that mousy girl sitting in the defendant's chair. Then, the woman like dodged to one side and ran away. But that girl, she caught up to her and, and she hit her. Then, the woman with long hair, she kinda slumped. The end. That's all I saw. Every little 
Bitsy Witsy. <laughs> oh my god, she's fun to imitate. She's fun to, to imitate. Mm. Well, your honor, I see. It is a remarkably solid testimony. I don't see a need to trouble the witness any. Wait, your honor. Yes, Mr. Wright? What about my cross-examination? I thought the witness's testimony just now was quite firm, didn't you? Mr. Wright, I understand you were Miss My Mia Faye's understudy, were you not? You must know her techniques well. Her cowardly way of finding tiny faults in perfectly good testimony. Hey, how dare you! Well, Mr. Wright, will you cross-examine the witness? Yes, I'm doing it. I gladly proceed with the cross-examination. If only because I have a feeling Edgeworth doesn't want me to. She has to have some weakness. Very well. You may begin your cross-examination. What is this account? It was like not at night. I looked out the window, you know? And then, ooh, I saw a woman with long hair being attacked. The one attacking her was a mousy girl sitting in the defendant's chair. Then the woman, like, dodged to one side and ran away. Hold it! She dodged. Dodged what? Well, the attack! Please, continue your testimony. What? The girl, that girl, she caught up to her and then she hit her. Hold it! How did you know it was my client? Huh? Well, I... Gee... First of all, she had a girl's receipt. And, and secondly, she was like... She was small. Who else could it be but her? She has a point. Hold on a minute. That testimony stinks. What? Miss May, I'm willing to bet that... You saw nothing. Did you really see the defendant at all? <laughs> Mr. Wright, what's the meaning of this? Yes, what is the meaning? Somebody tell me because I'm clueless about this, I mean. Uh, okay. If you really, if you had really witnessed my client, my affair, you would have noticed her clothes before noticing her physique. No one wears clothes like this on a daily basis except her. And I'm no ex expert on fashion, but her hairdo looks far from normal to me. However, the witness's testimony mentions neither of these things. The testimony is bogus. But, but... Still, we don't know if she was dressed that way the night of the murder. She was, Your Honor. I saw her. And so did Detective Gumshoe. What do you say to that, Miss May? What are you trying to say, you mean lawyer? I saw what I saw. I, I just didn't think all the trifling little details were necessary, darling. Miss May, the court would like to remind you to please admit nothing in your testimony. I'm sorry, Your Honor. I'll be a good girl, I promise. Your testimony again, if you would. Damn, I almost had her. Test, witness testimony, witnesses account. I did see everything. I did. The victim, the woman dodged the first attack and ran off to the right. Then, the girl in the hippie clothes ran after her. And she hit her with that weapon. I saw it. I did. That, that clock. Mm, the kind of statuey clock. The thinker, I think. Well, does that accurate... The, well, does the accuracy of my report does the... <laughs> Alright. Well, does the accuracy of my report not startle you? Hehe. <laughs> oh my god. I see. I only wish you had been so detailed from the beginning. Please, begin the cross-examination. Witness account. I did see everything. I did. The victim, the woman, dodged the first attack and ran out to the right. And the girl made and then she hit her with that weapon, I saw it, I did. That, that clock, mm. Hold it! Uh, clock? Didn't this come up in another testimony recently? 
Well, don't look so sour, Mr. Lawyer. You can't win them all. No, but I have a feeling I'm onto something now. That, that clock. Mm. Objection! Miss May, what you said just now was quite revealing. Revealing? Oh, you liked that, wouldn't you, naughty Mr. Lawyer? You just said that the statue of the thinker was a clock, but there's no way of knowing that just by looking at it. <laughs> Another person in much the same position as you recently called this a clock too, and he was found guilty of murder. <laughs> order! Order! Miss May, can you explain how you know this was a clock? Oh... The witness saw the murder with her own eyes. That's all that's important here. The defense is trying to confuse the issue with trivial, trivial matters. Yes, yes, of course, you will withdraw your questions. Right? But questions are all I have, Your Honor. And as you may recall, I've caught murderers with these questions before. Well, only once. Objection sustained. You may continue to question the witness. Phew, that was close. If you stopped me there, the trial would be over. Huh? What? So what happens now? What happens now is you answer my question, how did you know it was a clock? What? That's because I... I heard it? Yes, I heard it say the time. So... You've been to the law offices of Faye and Co. No, hey, I didn't say that. Why would I go there? I heard it from my hotel room. He. The law offices of Faye and Co., where the murderer took place, is very close to the hotel. She could easily have heard the clock. Mm, well, Mr. Wright, are you satisfied? No, Your Honor. I can't give up now. I'm not satisfied because... Couldn't have heard it. You were at the hotel. There's no way you could have heard the clock go off in the building. You have proof that she could not? Uh, amateurs, amateurs. Uh, listen to me, Mr. Wright. In the courtroom, proof is everything. Without it, you have nothing. You are nothing. Then I would like to propose the test to see if she really could have heard. The prosecution denies your request. What? On what grounds? This is a tri trivial matter with no direct bearing on the case at hand. Need objection sustained. Damn, time to switch directions quick. Ready to proceed, Mr. Wright. No, Your Honor. I can't give up now. I knew it was the bottom one. I just wasn't sure. I couldn't have wrong. Your Honor, members of the court, it is inconceivable that the clock in question rang. Batteries in that clock should be dead. Should be. But, Your Honor, if you would inspect the clock. Hmm, very well. Oh, well, Your Honor, are they? This clock has graver problems than dead batteries. This clock is missing its clockwork. It's quite empty. Oh, it was meant to be empty. Mr. Wright, would you care to explain to the court the meaning of this? It is as you can see. The clock was empty. It couldn't have rung. Therefore, this witness is a big fat liar. I'm so glad I didn't get that wrong. Well, Miss May. Distance. Quite a show you put on for us, Mr. Wright. He knew the clock was empty, somehow he knew. I'm afraid you've forgotten one thing, however. Indeed, the clock is empty, as you say, it can't ring. However, we must ask. When the when was the clockwork removed? If it was after the witness heard the clock, then there is no contradiction. Hmm, that's true. That is a possibility. The clock might have been emptied after she heard it, and that is exactly what happened, Your Honor. Well, Mr. Wright, 
Can you prove when the clockwork was removed? <laughs> Impossible, of course. I have proof. What? Wasn't it you who told me proof is everything? Well, I was listening. And now I'll show you the proof you like so much. The evidence that proves when the clockwork was removed is... Oh, is this one? Mia, yeah, me. What's up? You haven't called in a while. Well, actually, there's something I want you to hold on for me. Again? What is it this time? Mia, it's a clock. It's, it's made to look like that statue, the thinker, and it tells you the time. Ah, oh, I should probably tell you. The clock isn't talking right now. Uh, it's not working? That's lame. I had to take the clockwork out. Sorry, I put some papers inside it instead. Papers? Is that the evidence then? I'll leave that one up to your imagination. See you tonight at 9. Take that! Take a look at this. Mm, that's a very cute cell phone. Oh, ho, you have a girly phone. Wait, wait, this isn't my phone. Listen, this is the defendant's cell phone and it contains a recording. A recording of a conversation she had with a victim on the day of the murder. Order, order. The defendant's cell phone. This wasn't brought to my attention. Perhaps Detective Gumshoe overlooked it. Uh, the, de the good detective better remember he's up for eval evaluation soon. I gotta say, I'm starting to feel bad for the big fella. Let's hear the conversation. So you just want me to hold on to the thinker for you then, if you could. Uh, I should probably tell you the clock isn't talking right now. Huh? It's not working. That's lame. I had to take the clockwork out. Sorry. September 5th, 9.27 a.m. Your Honor, I think this makes it clear the clockwork was already gone by the time this was recorded. Which was well before the witness even arrived at our hotel. Well, Miss May, would you care to explain this to the court? Just how did you know that the weapon was a clock? What? Uh. Well, isn't it obvious? I saw that clock before. Mm, what store was that again? I go to so many. Oops, I forgot. <laughs> So, the witness had seen it before, that would make sense. Does the defense have any objections, Mr. Wright? Yes. The witness claimed she had seen it before, but this directly contradicts a piece of evidence already submitted to this court. Well then, let's see it. Please produce this evidence that will prove the witness has not seen the clock before. Take that! It's simple. This clock was never in any store, ever. What? A friend of mine made that clock. Only two exist in the world. And the one that isn't here is in police custody. Impossible! Everything is sold in stores. Miss May, I think it's high time you went shopping for a better excuse. <laughs> oh, excuse is not on sale today? Oh, oh, oh. oh! <laughs> What is it to you, porcupine head? That stupid clock doesn't matter, okay? She did it, and she should die for it. Die! Whoa, let's not get ahead of ourselves. This is a court of law about, and the witness will remain calm. Mm. Oh, 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 silly me. Did I like, um, like, lose it? I guess I did. <laughs> Scary. Miss May, let me ask. Tell me, how did you know the weapon was a clock? Hmm, oh dear. Does the defense have an opinion on this behavior? Okay, 
this is it. Yes, Your Honor. Allow me to explain how I see the truth of the matter. Miss April May, you knew the weapon was a clock because... You had heard about it. The witness has never held a, that clock in her hand. However, she had heard that it was a clock. She heard? That is correct, Your Honor. There is no other way she could have known the thinker was a clock. And I can show you the proof. Well, this is interesting. Let's see it then. Show me evidence proving that this witness had heard the murder weapon was a clock. Found in Miss May's hotel room. Take that! Have a look at this. Uh, oh, that? Uh, I found this in Miss May's room. Mr. Wright, please explain to the court what this is. Miss April, man, you were tapping the victim, Miss My Mia Face phone, were you not? Uh, Your Honor, this is irrelevant. I'm not entirely sure that it is. Objection overruled. It trouble troubles me that our witness was in possession of a wiretap. This is outrageous. Does the defense truly claim that the witness was tapping her phone? Absolutely. Even if that was the case, which it's not, you still have to prove one thing. Did the victim ever say that the weapon was a clock on the phone? Can you prove that? I think not. Oh yeah? I think I can. It's simple. What? Here's my proof. The proof that the victim sent on the phone that the weapon was a clock is... Proof that the victim sent on the phone that the weapon is a... Weapon was a clock. It's definitely not that. Let's just go with this one and make it a ring. I present the defendant's cell phone. Yes, we've seen that. Listen once more to the conversation between the defendant and the victim. Mia, what's up? You haven't called in a while. Well, actually, there's something I want you to hold on for me. Again, what is it this time? It's a clock. It's made to look like the statue, the thinker, and it tells you the time. Miss April May, you used a wiretap to listen to this conversation. That's how you knew the thinker was a clock. Am I wrong? Uh, uh. Objection! Your Honor, this is ridiculous. Your Honor, look at the witness's face. Does she seem amused to you? The defense demands an answer. Witness, answer the question. Did you tap her phone? Miss May, shut up, all of you. What gives you the right to talk to me like that? You, you liar. It's no fair, all of you ganging up on me like that. Oh, so I'm the bad curl. Is that it? Is that it? That did it. The court's seen the real Miss April May now. Now, deal the final blow. Why did you tap her phone? Answer the question. Do I have to? Isn't this a murder trial? Is Tiffany tapping her irrelevant? Yeah, she's saying exactly what Edward wants her to say. Miss May, you were tapping the victim's phone. I hardly call that irrelevant. While this court does not condone the defense tone of voice, he has a point. Do you have any explanation for the court? 
Can you prove you had nothing to do with this murder, even though you topped your phone? Ah, I'd like to see her pull that off. Mr. Lawyer, I saw that evil, evil grin. You were probably thinking I'd like to see her pull that off, weren't you? Damn, she's good. Well, you're not the first man who's thought that, and of course I can and I will. You can't be serious, no way. Way, I say, way. Oh, and I assure you, I'm serious, Mr. Lawyer. Hm. Okay. So, the killing happened around 9 at, at night. Why? That's just when I was getting room service from that sweet bellboy. Room service? Ice coffee, I believe it was. Ice coffee. Ice coffee, you know? Like, normal coffee, but like, cold? If you don't drink it quick, the ice melts and then you have regular cold coffee. Ice coffee. Think I'm making this up? Ask the bellboy. Ergo, the witness was on the scene at the time of the murder. So, where does that leave us? It is my great displeasure to inform you that the witness appears to have been tapping the victim's telephone. However, that is a separate crime with no bearing on the current case whatsoever. Her testimony stands. She saw the defendant, Maya Fey, commit murder. No. They're going to let her just walk away? There's no way I can win this unless I tie Miss May to the murder somehow. Well, does the defense have anything to say? Mmm, well, come on, think of something. Call the bellboy as a witness. The defense would like to call the hotel bellboy as a witness. There's something suspicious here, and I'm going to get to the bottom of it. I think you sunk in quite low enough already. Objection! I object to calling the bellboy. Why? What's your reason? Because I hold that the wiretapping had nothing to do with the killing. However, if you agree to one condition, I'll consent to calling this witness. Condition. If Miss April May's alibi is not called into question after you examine the bellboy, then you will recognize that Miss April May was not the killer, thus she is innocent. And thereby you must also accept the verdict of guilty for Miss Maya Fay. That is my condition. What? I'd better find something suspicious in that bellboy's testimony. Otherwise, Mayo will be declared guilty on the spot. What should I do? Something addition. Alright, I've got nothing to lose except for, well, everything. Understood. I accept your condition. <laughs> Fool. You fall right into my trap. Uh-oh. Uh, wait. Very well. Court calls the hotel bellboy to the stand. I believe we're ready for a witness to testify. He certainly does look like a bellboy. Yes, sir. I received your summons in the middle of work, sir. I'm happy to be of service. That tea set looks rather heavy, so without further ado, the witness may begin, begin his testimony. Very good, sir. Witness testimony, Miss May's room service. I am the head bellboy at the fine Gatewater Hotel, in business for four generations. I believe I received a call after eight o'clock in the evening from our guest, Miss May. She asked for an iced coffee to be brought to her at nine o'clock on the dot, sir. I brought it to her at precisely the requested time, of course, and I delivered the iced coffee to our guest. Miss May herself. I see. The defense may begin its cross-examination. Right. I'm ready, I hope. This is it. If I can't prove Miss May was involved with the murder now, Maya will be finished. Miss May's room service. I'm the head bellboy at the Fine Gate Water Hotel in the business for four generations. I believe I received a call after 8 o'clock in the evening from my guest, Miss May. She asked for iced coffee to be brought to her at 9 o'clock on the dot. 
I brought it to her at the precisely the requested time, of course, and I delivered the iced coffee to her guest Miss May herself. This bell boy wouldn't have any reason to lie, but I have to find something to use in this test I'm gonna press him on that. I'll press him until he spills the beans of his tea. Uh... She asked for an iced coffee to be brought to her at 9 o'clock on the dot. Hold it! 9 o'clock on the dot, you say? Yes, I confirmed that detail several times. She was watching a program on the TV and wished to drink after she finished her. 9 o'clock, the time of the murder. I brought it to her precisely the requested time, of course. Hold it! Precisely 9, then. Precisely. Exactly. Most definitely, sir. 9 p.m. How can you be so sure? Miss May was quite insistent that it be brought then. Oh, bellboy. Tee hee hee. I like to... I like the iced coffee at exactly 9 o'clock. Something like that, sir. Therefore, I knocked on their door at the crack of 9. So why would she be so partic particular about the time? And I delivered the iced um, ice, uh, coffee to her guest, Miss May herself. Hold it! You were sure it was Miss April May herself? Absolutely, sir. Absolutely. Yes, sir. As in, so very absolutely, sir. It's an endearing mannerism of mine. How come you're so very certain? Well, when I brought the room service, sir, she, the guest, sir, favored me with, uh, an embracer, sir. Embracer? Is that a French for embrace? It's French for kiss, sir, but not a French kiss, sir. More of a peck on the cheek. Why would she have done that? I believe perhaps she was momentarily swayed by my prim demeanor, sir. It was a moment I shall never, ever forget, sir. Sounds pretty fishy to me. I think our Miss May was up to something and wanted the bellboy to remember her. It's no good. There's nothing there. Is it? Is that it? Tsk, tsk, Finally, you understand. This bellboy has absolutely no reason to lie. Now, if you have any decency, you will end this rather tedious cross-examination here. Hmm, it was a bit tedious. The witness may leave this guy. I can't let this happen, can I? Protest. Wait, please wait. Yes, does the defense have something to add? One last question. Let me ask one last Objection. question. Your Honor, I must object. The charade of justice has gone on long enough. Now, now, Mr. Edgeward. All right, Mr. Wright. I'll give you one more question, that's all. Okay. This is really it, now. This is my last chance. What do I ask him about? Tell me again about, uh, room service. Again, sir. At exactly 9 o'clock, I delivered room service to Miss Main Room 303. The guest had requested iced coffee. 18 was the charge, as I recall. It's spicy. $18? Doesn't that seem a bit expensive? Yes, well, iced coffee for two, you know, and we don't skip on the ice, sir. What did you say? What did you say? Ah, uh, uh, rather quite... Bellboy, tell us the truth now. Was someone else staying in Miss May's room? Objection! I object. That was objectionable. Objection overruled. The witness will answer the question. Uh, yes, I see. Why did you not mention this in your testimony? Well, sir, you, uh, uh you didn't ask. Nice try. That's the sort of thing you're normally supposed to mention. Uh, yes, quite indeed. It was the, uh, good barrister there, Mr. Edgeworth, who... He asked me not to mention it if I wasn't specifically asked, sir. Oof. You fool! I've done it. I've won. Miss April May checked into a twin room with a man, correct? Yes, sir. Then, when you brought them room service, you didn't see that man in the room. 
That's right, sir. Your Honor, we have just learned of another person involved who may have been the murderer. In light of this new fact, I hold that it's impossible to judge the defendant. Wouldn't you agree, Mr. Edgeworth? And who, Mr. Wright? Who is this other person? Simple, it was... The man with Miss May. The man who checked in with Miss May. Ugh. I can't answer that right now. Your Honor. Has, has been previously revealed, Miss April May. Miss April May was tapping the victim's phone, yet Miss May herself has an alibi at the time of the murder. However, that does not clear the man that was with her. The bellboy, the bellboy saw no one else in the room at the time of the murder. My, what a convenient little setup, but it's too late. Too late. I suppose you'd like it if it was too late, wouldn't you? After all, it was you who hid the presence of the other man from this court. Oof. Upstart. Amateur. These accusations are... ludicrous. Enough! The court acknowledges the defense's argument. I expect the prosecution and defense to look into this matter fully. Am I understood? Yes. Ugh. Yes, Your Honor. That is all today for the trial in my affair. Court is adjourned. September 7th, 2.24 p.m. Distant District Court, Defendant's Lobby Number 1. Mr. Wright, you were amazing in there. Really? I think I might be your newest fan. Oh, I was just doing my job, you know. <laughs> then again, that other attorney was pretty cool too. Huh? That face of his, with his eyes wide and trembling lips. It sent shivers up my spine. Hmm, if you say so. So, what happens with me? Do I get to go home now? Hmm, well... No, I don't think so. Not yet. Oh, I see. But I got a great lead in today's trial. A lead? That man with Miss May, he's the key. Oh, I get it. What happened to Miss May after that, anyway? I heard they arrested her. I guess she's learning her charms won't work everywhere. She's probably at that detention center now. I may have to go down there later. Anyway, this case is far from closed. Yes, sir. I'm going to find out more about this man. Do you think he was the one who... Maybe so. Sis. Don't worry, I'll find him by tomorrow, I promise. I'm counting on you. I asked for a full record of Miss April May's testimony. I thought it might be in handy during the trial tomorrow, but now that I have it, I'm not so sure. Most of her testimony was all lies. In fact, there's only one part that hasn't been stricken from the record. May's testimony, the victim dodged an attack that ran to the right, but she was caught and struck. May's testimony added to the court record. I don't know how much good this will do me at all now. Anyway, time to hit the pavement and do some investigating. Maya doesn't belong in that detention center, and it's up to me to set her free. To be continued. Okay, um... I'm gonna stop for now for this for this video, but I will uh, I will continue on into the next part because uh, I want to get this game as done as fast as possible. Because uh, yeah, that game is coming out soon, and I want to play it. I want to finish this trilogy before I finish the other, where I go play the other one. All right, so I'm gonna save. Uh, I'm gonna stop the recording. And I'm going to continue, but you guys will see probably see this video a little later. Alright, stop. <laughs>